Hello everybody, and welcome back to the THO Movie Reviews Podcast, the show where we bring you passionate, honest, and insightful film criticism. I'm your host, Bennett Campbell Ferguson, and what you are about to hear is a review that I recorded with my colleagues, uh, Maxwell Myers and Mo Shawnett, over Zoom after we all watched Spike Lee's new film, The Five Bloods. Enjoy. All right, so we just uh, we just watched the Five Bloods, or in the the case of Max, uh, watched it uh, yesterday. <laughs> just, yes. you're, you're gonna get those. Right. It's, it's all good. You're gonna get the like the raw immediate reaction from me and Mo, and Max has had time to to gestate, which you know, I mean, that's that's valuable as well. What? Uh, yeah, I what mean, you- I wish I had more people to to talk to it about. That helps the digestion, but in quarantine, <laughs> it's just. Just me and Eddie, just back and forth, and that's about it. <laughs> well, what uh, what did you guys think of the movie, first of all? I liked it. It's, there's a lot of movie in that movie. That's It's a two-and-a-half-hour runtime. Um, but it, it, it very much smacks of Spike Lee, of him doing everything he can with what he's got. And there's something to that. Uh, it's raw and really immediate and it's a phenomenal cast. I swear to God, Delroy Lindo better get an Oscar at the end of this. Yes. Um, yeah, it's really good. Max, what did you think? Oh, I loved it. Uh, it was, yeah, it was just Spike Lee. He had, it seemed like he had everything at his disposal. He was firing on, all cylinders and then some, I just, yeah, from start to finish, I was, it made me feel from beginning to end, you know, whether it was, you know, some lighthearted humor, horror, just overwhelming sadness. Uh, it made, I felt it all, uh, but it was beautiful and fucked up and it's, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> I, I turned to Eddie and I said, if there's any justice after like, if, if uh, the Oscars want to talk about what inclusivity is and that maybe Parasite isn't an isolated, you know, here you go situation, this movie will win Best Picture. Unless something else completely torpedoes it, but it would, it would, I, think it, I think it has a, I think it should win. I think it's amazing. It's got some legs, most definitely. Yeah. Like, I mean, if if, if oh, sorry, Black Klansman can make it to Oscar, then I think this can too. Yeah. And yeah. They, they owe it. They owe it to Spike Lee. And I will say, yeah, I was like two and a half hours. Okay, let's sit down and do this. And it's going to sound, I was, but I was like, it didn't feel like two and a half hours. It felt like an hour and 45. I mean, well, that's still a while. I sat there for a good chunk and I took a break to, you know, eat some food because I was hungry. But that's the beauty of Netflix. I'm allowed that breather <laughs> if I need it. And, and yeah, I mean, it was it was long, but I mean, I didn't feel like I was sitting there going, "Wow, is this gonna end soon?" I was I was hooked from beginning to end. It was great. It's, it's well used screen time. I mean, there's there's not a, a moment from this film that I would cut, honestly. And then I like you guys. I I thought it was great. I I loved it. I mean, I think uh, I I I mean, honestly, I did not you know know much about it going into it uh what it was other than that it was the next spike lee film and so i was uh i wasn't i wasn't really prepared for you know just just how you know visceral and terrifying it was uh, going to be i mean this 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 movie could have been a lot of things it, it could have been kind of like a you know a, a wistful uh friendship movie and it is that but then also becomes really like this a very kind of brutal action movie of a kind and not in a way where you're meant to get like kind of excited by the the carnage i mean it's it's really you know genuinely frightening and disturbing and provocative and uh you know i mean it's i mean just as as a work of art as a kind of a a piece of you know really epic cinema it's it's kind of a it's kind of a marvel i think really i mean it's like just it just feels like the work of 
someone who's at the height of you know their craft. I mean the the colors, the the pacing, the performances. I I thought it was pretty spectacular. Um, Mo, you brought up uh, uh, Joe Orlando. I mean he's I I think we could probably all agree he's the standout here. Um, I, Oh uh, yeah. Should we, should we talk good. about the the performances cuz it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty astounding cast across the board. Oh yeah, totally. It's such it's a it's a weirdly deeply uncomfortable character like just in in terms of being just this vile, angry, curmudgeonly, racist old guy. Who's still, who's just full of like all this simmering rage at any given moment. It's like he's truly unpredictable, but God damn, is he captivating? Like it's, it's <laughs> impossible to look away when he's on screen. He's so damn good at it. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, Del, Delroy, he, I, I mean, I, I hate to be like, he's got it in the bag, but I mean, how how could I don't see anybody coming out of any performance that we've been talking about coming out of anywhere and taking taking that away? I just there was that I think the scene him screaming and yelling, wandering away into the woods, and it doesn't follow him. You just see him leave shop, but you hear him screaming. It's just it's haunting, and yeah. yeah, you cannot take your eyes off him. You're afraid to take your eyes off of him. You, don't know really where he is at all times, you know. Who's yeah? It's it was, he's unpredictable. It was it was a, an amazing, phenomenal performance. And it's great too how long they they hold that shot as he's just kind of disappearing into the foliage. Like there's you know for a movie where there's so much going on, there's a real like I think discipline and patience to the storytelling. And I think I'm um, like. Uh, uh, I, uh, it's, it's amazing, like, how he transforms, like, you know, kind of slowly, bec- like, unraveling more and more as he, as he kind of, like, seems to be descending into madness. And the, but then at the end, like, kind of, like, achieving this, uh, this grace and that he, he goes out, like, and, and kind of a, uh, you know, a, you know, a, a, a weirdly powerful and, a noble way and i also um uh, you know uh i i also have to uh, applaud a, a certain prop and how he uses it the the make america great again hat which i i thought it was such a great device of that hat getting you know dirtier and dirtier <laughs> throughout the <laughs> the whole thing and you know and wow. that moment when he like sticks it right back on his head like you know kind of this moment of you know hey i'm you know i'm it's just, it's just this this weird moment of uh, I, I don't know like defiance and bitterness. It's it's just very like strange and spellbinding, and it it makes so much sense for the character at that moment. I think um, yeah. it's like he it's putting on the hat. It's like it feels like the point of no return, like for sanity and mentally. It's just like that's isn't that the point where they basically let him go off into the woods. Yes. Yeah. You like it's it is. It's like the last sign. It's like he's like it's like his mind itself is not able to be saved. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it's powerful. And when Jean Renault puts it on like later in the film and he's wearing that white outfit and you yeah. know <laughs> body type looks very familiar to a certain someone we see in the news, maybe a little less orange in the face, but uh <laughs> indeed, it looks indeed. very it, I mean, this is this is and that's what I was. I mean, kind of alluding to in my brief summary of my feelings is it's just it's things like that. It's like it's not there because he likes it, that hat is not in the movie because Spike Lee likes uh, Trump. So you see it come up right at the beginning, and you know, you know, it's just it's something. There's something. It's its own landmine. It's another yeah. landmine in the jungle. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, since you brought the land. Wait, what did you say? Huh? Subtlety is overrated. <laughs> I, I have to agree. <laughs> yeah, it, so- it only gets you so far. <laughs> Especially when it comes to Spike Lee. <laughs> yeah. That's like, I mean, I, I mean that I mean that brings up another great thing we can talk about. I mean, I I think you've already 
alluded to this, but like uh, it just it just seems it just seems like you know like I mean I mean what do you, what do you guys like make of like the the movie's like brashness and kind of it's like it's the way it like states what it means like so clearly because like I feel like that's like kind of it kind of has to to be that way like you know there are going to be people who are going to say it's too much but I don't know I I I feel like it's really just enough and I'm just I'm just curious about you guys' thoughts on that aspect I I mean, I, I, I'm i repeating myself, so it's, subtlety is overrated. It's <laughs> a movie with a point, and it wants you to get it. It's sure. We are, we are, all right, we're getting political, fuck it. Uh, here, here. We are four yeah. years into the Trump administration. It has objectively been bad for a lot of people, but especially people of color and especially black people. Um, yes. We, we are recording this on, what day is it? It's June the 13th. We are still in the midst of the protests over the, uh, over the deaths of George Floyd, of Breonna Taylor, of uh, Ahmaud Arbery. Um, and really it's become clear that th- this is something I've, I've, I've talked about in the past, and I'm going to bring it up again. Something that bugs me is that a lot of movies that are about racism are said in the past, and the subtext there, intentional or not, is that things were bad then, but they're okay now, and that is blatantly untrue. Um, things are better in terms of race relations, in terms of the position of Black people in America uh, since uh, the Civil Rights era, since the 1970s, but that doesn't mean progress stops. That doesn't mean that we're at a place of comfort, of stability, and there's still, it's still, racism is still a very present, very clear danger. And so this is a movie that is not coy about that. It's, I mean, history repeats itself, but history does not repeat itself, but it does rhyme. So what is the climax of the movie? It's a rich white guy sending black people to fight in Vietnam for a cause that is ultimately beneficial to him and him alone, not caring whether or not they make it out alive. It's, it, it, again, it's not, it's very clear and it's very direct. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that sense of, of, of outrage and of directness that Spike Lee is very good at. Um, and that I, I would like to, a lot, I'd like to see more, more like stuff like that, more with that directness and with that anger. That's righteous and easy to 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 back yourself up with, or to get behind. I should say. Yeah. Well, and you, you I bring... think there. Oh, oh. No, go for it. Oh well, I was just gonna say, Mo. I I think you bring up a a great point about you know so many movies about racism being set in the past and. I think it's interesting that, you know, like this, you know, this movie is, you know, aware of the past and acknowledges it and yet is so intensely, you know, invested in the the present. I think that's, you know, why it's so powerful. And I think, you know, I mean, I'll just talk about this briefly. I mean, you know, having the having the same actors, you know, you know, play play their characters in the flashback scenes like you know really i think is a is a is an impressive way to kind of keep you know your focus on the now so that even when the movie is looking backward it's you know it's it's in the moment it's it's vital it's in intense it's saying something i i i think that's really incredible max what were you going to say and also okay go for it i was just going to say i feel like subtlety is polite. I feel tongue in cheek is good when you are maybe when you're talking to the boss about a raise, maybe you want to allude to something. Uh, (laughs) I think the time of subtlety, I think subtlety only gets you so far. And I, I will, I mean, I think I did just see uh, Spike Lee's film. What was the one with, uh, 
It's not his first film, the second one. I cannot remember it right now. Oh, oh. Uh, can someone help me out? Not I'm school days. Look it up. Uh, uh, school days? No, after school days. Bo Better like, Blues? No, the oh, like the big the, right the big thing? one. Do the right thing. We saw do when I saw that because my brain is not working. Uh, we saw do the right thing this last year on the big screen, and it seemed like the message that is in the movie, which has this storyline of like a day in the life on this park block, it still seemed reson like it resonated to today, which was unfortunate. And I think you can only make movies for so long and talk about subtlety before you just have to start shouting. The message you and i think america and a lot of people are tired of being polite and subtle and it's now this is the fact this is where this is what's happening and that's what spike lee does and that's good <laughs> i think it's good to have that voice uh and it feels right for right now uh yeah it's great absolutely well said mo, mo what were you gonna say before well i was just gonna say it's with with the way he shoots the flashback sequences, this is going off on a big tangent, um, but just in terms of stylism, uh, I love the way they did that because it looks like a, a cheesy war movie from the 70s. Um, and it sort of, it sort of mythologizes them in this weird way. Uh, it's, it's very deliberate. They change the film stock. They change the aspect ratio. And you can see that when you watch the movie. Um, yeah. They change the the way it looks, um, and the the fact that we have actors in their sixties playing themselves in their twenties with like some amount of of de aging makeup, but nothing like like they not not none, nothing like in the Irishman or whatever where they make you know old Robert De Niro look like young Robert De Niro <laughs> kinda. Um, but it it does that and the other the other big the other great performance in this they're all great performances but the other big performance in this movie is for Chadwick Boseman uh, as again a black superhero basically <laughs> uh, as as this uh, for for lack of a better term the melanin messiah if I may uh, uh, hold on a Sorry, uh, he the way it's not it's a great mashup of performance with him as as someone who can who can orate who can inspire believers and followers in this really visceral way, but also the way they shoot him like as an icon as this this holy figure like he, the first time we see him is the photograph and he's literally sitting on a throne. It's it it very much it works to hook you into the idea that he was a larger than life figure and that they are all living in his shadow even fifty years later. Um, so I just I wanted to mention that and I thought that was a really interesting device, the way he shot the flashback sequences and I think it paid off really well. Uh, Eddie, uh, my partner, he brought up a really good point that it's uh he said he also felt like it kind of spoke to the idea. Of, PTSD that regardless of whether or not, you know, it's 2020 or 1967 or 1968, it's like, they are the same person. And it's like to not forget that, like that, that footage of what you're seeing, like, like he said, he goes, I dream of this place every night. Like that, you know, it's like it's a weird like it speaks to the firmness of it, and it's a, it's this thing that is happening to these people, but it's affecting them even at this age. It they they relive it kind of in their own way all the time, and that's what PTSD is. And it felt like he was like that's a good device in in that regard. So he felt like it conveyed that idea as well. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think I mean, well, there 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 are two things I want to say about you know some of the stuff you guys are talking about. I mean, first of all, I mean, in terms of Chadwick Boseman, I mean, it's uh, it's such a great example of movie star casting because I think he brings, you know, baggage in a good way. You know what I mean? Like, who who better than the man who played Jackie Robinson and T'Challa to play, you know, as you 
said Mo, the the superhero of the movie, you know, the Messiah figure. It's a, you know, it's kind of like our like awareness. I think of you know his filmography, like really kind of you know like adds to the almost like mythical quality of the character, and also like them uh, how on um, uh, you know the 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 narrowest aspect ratios are uh, you know are used for the time in the jungle and uh you know e- even though obviously it's 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 widescreen when they're in the jungle on the mission uh in in the present it's still narrower uh than some of the other scenes and it uh i think and and oddly enough and this is uh this is gonna make me sound insane bringing this up as a reference it made me think of how avatar was shot in a narrower aspect ratio and how like anytime anytime you have trees like you know it it there's something powerful about like, getting narrower and like you know like creating that that sense of like everything's vertical you know it's like it's more like claustrophobic it's it creates you know more like that sense of you know great height and i think you know i mean that's just and that's just one of many i think you know brilliant you know you know visual touches throughout the movie which you know looks amazing across the board i think yeah i yeah there was i was that scene I, the scene i was referencing earlier about uh paul screaming into the woods and just wandering off it, we've been doing a lot of old old a lot of film school stuff uh kurosawa and uh de palma just several other old directors and there's like it, there was several shots i was like it felt like a samurai film at times it sure. felt like a war film at times i mean it felt like treasure of the sierra madre it was it was a lot of things it was it he was pulling from his like he's clearly a, just it just he was just showcasing he's like guess what i'm also a, a huge film buff and he and you could see it in his eye and it's beautiful yes, <laughs> absolutely so I wanted to I wanted to talk about uh, a, a scene that I think is really one of the defining scenes uh, of the movie the the scene where the the landmine goes off uh, and uh, and Eddie is killed um, uh, and I think like just the 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 horror of like you know you know these guys you know going back and and you know yet again you know after they survived a war decades later again ending up in a life or death situation losing one of their comrades combined with the the just the really kind of astounding level of suspense through that whole scene i i mean the movie definitely had my attention before that but it 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 sees it on a new level in that moment i mean uh, i just wanted wanted to hear from uh, you guys like your your reaction to that scene, your interpretation of it. That's definitely one I saw coming. Um, as soon as <laughs> they established that there's here's a group of people whose job it is to remove active landmines in Vietnam. <laughs> that might come up again. <laughs> um, Just the, the by the way. <laughs> yeah. So I was I was waiting for that shoe to drop. Um, it's. It's it is really well done in terms of planning and pacing. It's phenomenal tension with uh, with a scene where uh, uh, David steps on a steps on a mine and just keeps his foot there. Yeah, and it's it, 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 it creates this sort of it works really well in terms of structure in terms of the screenplay because it creates this moment that bonds them to the 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 members of Lamb. Uh, um, to the group that's disarming the bombs, but also it reaffirms that Paul, despite all of his faults, is still, he's capable, he's intelligent, and he's willing to do this insane stunt to try and save his son. Um, and then it t- uh, he turns on a dime and turns on everyone because he's crazy. Uh, but yeah, that's, that was really, that was really strong. And it's very much a turning point of the movie where things get things get a lot more dangerous from there on out. Uh, I, agree. I 
I also agree. <laughs> okay, um, I'm just going to let you talk first, because then I'll just say I agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I got a follow-up, but uh, I, uh, yeah, I always feel weird going second. Uh, the So, yeah, the, the introduction of Lamb, yeah, I think is most said. You, you kind of suspect it's going to come up again. And when they find the case that's rusted out and all the gold has been spread out, everywhere uh honestly i mean i watched it with i watched it with two other people we were all just holding our breath anytime that that thing went off and somebody stuck a shovel into the ground and i mean we were waiting for it so and i think it's it's introduced perfectly because it's here's the planting here's the setup and then the plant you're already just holding your breath and then yeah finally it happens and I think the only reason we we as a group saw it coming, someone pointed out, they're like, well, I got suspicious when he managed to get everybody out of the blast radius by just walking backwards. And also, walking backwards? <laughs> it's just like, yeah, that, that was a problem right there. But, uh, yeah, I was, I mean, I think that is the moment where when Eddie, when Eddie explodes, is, uh, shit gets real. And then, yeah, and then it only proceeds to get even more real and weird as, you know, the double crossing happens and, you know, innocent people are now involved as well. And Paul's, you know, going crazy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a phenomenal scene. And it, it's also a great scene. It highlights one of the other things that I really love about the way the movie is edited is uh, they bring up a... Uh, famous African American track star, you know that Paul has told his son about David, and he's like, and he tells him to remember. And but in the the this moment where they are, you know, in this life or death thing, it cuts camera cuts from this you know interaction, which is obviously should be have our entire focus, and instead puts up a picture of this athlete who's I wish I might feel like is would have been more important for this David story. Moses. What was it? David Moses. David Moses. Mm. He pulls up the picture of David Moses, and as they tell what he did and the information that is laid out in front of you, because it's about, you know, the movie is also what uh, Storm and Norman, uh, Chadwick Boseman's main idea was to take the gold and give it back to the people. And I feel like this Spike is doing that. He doesn't just talk about... Uh, David Moses as a prop. He puts him up on the screen and he makes you face him, along with several other people in history. Just as a reminder, again, he was not going for subtlety, and it, the time for subtlety is, is past when it comes to this particular topic. And uh, yeah, it was, it's, it's a great, it's a phenomenal scene, and it, you hold your breath the whole time. Well, the, I, 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 I want I do want to talk more about the scene, but I mean I'm glad you brought up the photo. I mean I mean I just I love the you know the use of photos throughout the movie. I love that when you see one, you know, it it's it's kind of like isolated on the screen, you know, it it, it fills it fills up the space, you know, you really get to look at it. There's something powerful about that. And then also like uh I I mean and I'm I'm glad you uh mentioned the editing. I mean one thing I think is interesting is this was edited by Adam Goff who uh uh co-edited Roma with Alfonso Cuarón and uh there's there's so many great cuts in this movie. I think my favorite is uh, right before uh they they do the bit with the rope to to pull Jonathan Majors off the landmine. You, there's a there's one last cut to a close up of his you know his his foot on that yeah. bit of metal, and it's just like it, like the the moment like that that one final like cut to his foot like I just that was just like one of the most terrifying things I've seen in a movie of, in a long time. Like reminding you of the danger and what's at stake if they don't pull this off. I mean, it's just it's almost like it's just it's it's kind of breathtaking. Like I think like the hold the movie has on you at that point. Like, I mean, it's, it's funny, like, you know, like there's so many action movies now and yet so many, so few of them are like genuinely suspenseful. And this was a case of, you know, less bombast, you know, more suspense. And that's why I think it's so, 
it's so engrossing. I mean, you can't, you can't turn away. I mean, it's, as was, as we talked about, you know, it's over two and a half hours and you can't turn away. <laughs> no, it's the, uh, I mean, they even make fun of, you know, Rambo and the expendables like this. They're like, you know, like these 60 year old men and they're just like going on secret missions. Like, like this is the, the weird uh, air. And I mean, they set you up the, they're, you know, they want you to like, there's nothing that's not glamorous, but it's terrifying. It's yeah. exactly what it is. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Actually, you know, and this is kind of, you know, like kind of the, you know, like even though it's, it's heightened to a certain degree, it's, it's almost like the realistic version of like one of those, you know, old guys kick ass movies, you know, where it's like, well, this is what, you know, really would happen in this situation. A lot of people would die and be severely injured. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see anything. Well, I, 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 I can't think of another question, but any, anything else you guys want to talk about any topics you want to bring to the floor? It, it's, it seems interesting to me that it doesn't, at least I, at least for my estimation, it doesn't vilify the Vietnamese. Yes. Um, it's like the, there are comments made about uh, the Viet Cong, but it's generally assumed that the, because those are coming from Paul, who is again a crazy old racist, um, that they're not that they don't reflect the what the, the movie's intended uh, message, what what the creators wanted to say. Um, and I think I think that's interesting. And there's there's one scene where I'm, I'm remembering it now where. Um, they ambush uh, a troop of soldiers and we see the soldiers talk, like the, they're talking to the soldiers are talking to each other in Vietnamese and you know, the bloods don't know what they're saying, but they're just talking about like, I found a poem from my girlfriend and right. it was really lovely. And it's just, it's, it's a good, it's a very quick, but really effective reminder of, like, of you know, the humanity of the other side. Um, and there, and I, I definitely appreciate that level of forethought, of, of insight, and and uh, cleverness in terms of how we're, how we're depicting people we were at war with once. Uh, I mean, I think this actually segues really nicely into one of my favorite actors in it, uh, Van Veronica No as Hannah O'Hanna. Oh yeah. Yeah, she was. I mean, I mean, I remember watching that part, and I mean, uh, I, just, I mean, that time, I mean, the Viet Cong was had occup had occupied the radio airwaves, and the things that were being announced weren't always true. It was their way of playing mind games on the soldiers, and but in and what I find it very interesting is that I mean, the points that she's making are you know are kind of designed to sound fucked up but it's because they are fucked up but they're also they're not mind games this isn't one of those oh fake statements like that's why they they doubt for a second whether or not martin Luther king jr was actually assassinated you know we as an audience know it's all true but there is a part of them that has to wonder if it isn't or if it is if it's just them but i mean but what they're saying we as an audience know to be true it makes the statements of the way she says somehow or haunting and it just I don't know it really resonated and just like the words like echoed in me hollow it was just like yeah it was it was but it was and that was amazing what an amazing performance by her I really liked that element of it um I like that yeah they, there is no they don't seem to villainize the the Vietnamese people what they they really try to bring attention to is that the war affected everyone and that it, it's kind of forever whether you know, it's like, oh, I, you know, my aunt and uncle died in the war or, you know, the altercation that Paul gets into with a chicken salesman who ultimately, you know, sends up screaming, you know, you killed my mother and father. Yes. And, you know, there, there is that, you know, what, what is the imprint that is left? And, you know, what was it all for? It was, um, yeah, again, it's, it, Vietnam, is, the war itself is not a pretty subject and, it, there's no point in trying to color code it, so it doesn't pull any punches, but it, it does give you an 
an image and something to relate to, and it's very potent. Well, I think you guys make some great points, and I, I kind of going back to what you were saying, Mo. Like, I think uh, I, I, I do think you know it's a it's a very you know, you know, uh, fair you know you know, human you know portrait of all these characters. And I, I think it was it was kind of striking to me how the movie like really emphasizes the the tragedy of our our main characters who have been exploited in in so many ways. And you know to you know to to go back there and to you know kind of to allude to the scene you mentioned, you know Max with the 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 guy with the chicken, you know saying you killed my mother and father to like kind of for like a for for them to like you know kind of you know go go back and you know kind of like face that that kind of anger there's you know something inevitable and 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 tragic and fascinating and painful about that i think also i, I like that um uh, you know the 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 final um uh, uh the the final scene with uh delroy lindo you know his uh, his death his death scene not his final scene in the movie, but the scene where he he's killed. And he says, you know, he says just straight up, we fought in an immoral war. And it, I think it's interesting. I think it, it seems like he's um uh, he's speaking for the speaking for the movie at that point. I mean, I I certainly think you know he's 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 probably like speaking what Spike Lee wants you know us to take a take away from it. You know, and that's uh, I think that's a pretty pretty amazing thing. Any final thoughts, you guys? Um, I I'm pre- I'm I'm going early prediction. I think this will win Best Picture. I think Spike Lee will win Best Director. I think the the group of writers. I think it'll win Best Screenplay, and I think Best Actor for. Delroy Lindo and I will and cinematography and I would even say score if I was swinging wildly I think I think it could take all of them I think this is if I were to make if I were to put a stamp on it I think this is the movie to beat and but I unlike when maybe it's declared this early I think it really could deserve it I feel it earned it so I could also see Chadwick Boseman getting a supporting nod yeah I could not win but Probably, but maybe a nod. Yeah, yeah, I could, I could see that totally. I, I would also, I'm, I mean, I'd also argue for Clark Peters as Otis and our oh, yeah. doctor, who, I, I mean, I don't think has a pill addiction, but everybody was concerned that he might. I don't know. It, well, it's kind of cool. There's some ambiguity there, really. I mean, there is, and I mean, it's, but I also think it's. Yeah, it was a, a definite comment, but I would love to see him nominated too. He was, he makes it to the end. Yeah, and also that scene where uh, he he meets he meets the uh, the Asian woman's daughter, and he he knows immediately. He looks right at her, and how long it takes him to ask the question is yeah. That was that was a great scene. <laughs> that is a great scene. Yeah. I you know I want to I want to speak to like the movies like uh you know awards you know prospects I mean like in in that vein I mean this is this is by far I think you know like the the most you know impressive and ambitious new film I've seen this year and of course like we're we're seeing a lot of films you know because of the pandemic you know being delayed and uh I just think it's I just think it's so great that like you know this movie wasn't you know wasn't you know held back for a while that it's here you know right now you know like from the safety of our homes that we can watch this really kind of you know a uh, amazing you know bold provocative uh you know interesting you know uh uh really brave you know Spike Lee movie. I mean, it's like, it's like there's a, this, you know, this is, you know, I, I mean, during the past three months, this is, you know, some of the, but this is, I, I think, you know, given, uh, given the way things have been lately, this is by far one of the best ways I could have spent, you know, two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, 
it's hard to get through, but you know, I think you make it out on the other side, at least knowing something you didn't know before. And it's important and it's important now. I, Spike Lee did say that he did not plan for this. He didn't record or film anything new ahead of this for the movie. He goes, this is, he goes, this is, I mean, I was planning on releasing this movie this year. He goes, I did not expect this conversation to be happening because I'm so, I saw him do an interview with Trevor Noah and he looked so happy for Spike Lee. <laughs> like, he's just like, he's like, this is great. Have you seen all the faces out there? He's like, you just, it's the most hopeful I've seen Spike Lee seem in an interview. He didn't, and it was great. I think there is something here. And I think having it be act, uh, accessible to most people at home during this time is, it's like you said, it's very wonderful. Absolutely. All right. I think that I think that wraps it up. Can I say one final thing before we all sign off? Yes, yes, yes. please, absolutely, yeah. Um, I think I speak for everyone here when I say we at uh, THO Movie Reviews unequivocally agree Black Lives Matter uh, and keep on the police. Um, if you're, if you like me, do not have the capacity to protest out in the streets for whatever reason. Uh, in my case, it is cowardice. Um, you can still support the movements through other ways. Donate to, uh, uh, the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, to Black Lives Matter, to the Bail Project. Um, there's a bunch of information out there uh, about different, or and they, uh, you, they can curate this stuff for different places you can donate, uh, to support this cause. Um, keep the fight going. Absolutely. Well said. Agreed. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening. If you like this podcast, please click thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at THO Movie Reviews. Please check out all the great reviews and content we have at thomoviereviews.wordpress.com. Once again, I'm your host, Bennett Campbell Ferguson. I did this review with Maxwell Myers and Mo Shawnette. And from all of us here at THO Movie Reviews, happy movie watching.